ship. Time to give you some live coverage from behind the scenes of Sport Fishing Championship SFC Live. Coming at the web, the web averse, Robbie Floyd. I'm not going to call you Peter Miller this year, Ronnie Moore. <laughs> We are in uh, our studio while the rest of the field, the fleet, is at the second stop of the SFC down in Louisiana. They took off this morning. Uh, 10 o'clock was the official release time, Ronnie, but they'll be fishing for the next few days. Yeah, and they starting off a great year in the DR last week. Now we head over to Grand Isle, Louisiana for the Louisiana Gulf Coast Billfish Classic. Exciting times here. I know the field is even bigger than it was last year. Such a growing tournament. That's always a good thing to see. And we have some of our biggest contenders of the SFC show up this week. Absolutely. You see the boats down there are lined up, prepared to go this morning. But uh, they've been coming from all reaches of the Gulf of Mexico. And the interesting thing, when we were at last week at the D Dominican Republic, they come in and out each day. Here, once they leave, they are gone for quite a while. The entire field, and we won't see them again until Saturday afternoon. Yeah, and with that, you always want to wonder wonder what the weather is going to look like the next three days since they won't return until the final day when lines are out on Saturday. The weather looks great, Robbie. Right. I mean, it is looks wind, great on it shore, is warm. At least. It is warm. The winds are light and variable. Everything's setting up for a good event here in the Gulf. You know what's looking solid is Hurricane Hole is one of our takeoff points. There is the uh, the fine facilities that are considered uh, down there in Grand Isle, Louisiana. We'd like to welcome everybody to the second stop of the Sport Fishing Championship. We are live in our studios. Kind of a kickback Thursday. Ronnie Moore, I'm Robbie Floyd. I got my Salt Life shirt on his T-shirt because we kick off at the top of the hour with uh, CBS Sports Network coverage. Yeah, we got to kind of pull back the curtain just a little bit and show people what to expect here for the Louisiana Gulf Coast Billfish Classic. I'm excited to kick off the Gulf division. We were in the Caribbean last week in the DR. What a great way to start that off breaking records set the previous year as well. Katie Sawyer. Uh, we also have Michelle Dalton. A couple of different uh, correspondents are going to be having down there live and on site talking to the the athletes, the competitors this week. I call them athletes because I know what it takes to catch the fish out there. It's not easy. It's not just a fishing show or a catching show. Um, they bust their tail for these next three days. They do a lot of hard work goes into these tournaments. Every single crew has different ways of planning and strategy. Strategy, but we know when we kick off any kind of event in Louisiana, the locals, they're going to do it upright. And so I know it's a great atmosphere down there in Grand Isle and Hurricane Hole. Hey, it's time to get out the marching band. They fire it up just like last year. This was an awesome start, an awesome kickoff to the 2022 uh, season, the first event. Now it's the second stop. Still got to do it the same way. You're prepping bait. You're listening to music. Couldn't get much better. Oh, 100%. I don't know if this is a college football game coming up or if there is Mardi <laughs> Gras in town. I don't know what's going on. On, but we do know that the SFC is in town. Over half of the boats in the tournament this week are SFC teams, so which means the Gulf is going to be hotly contested once again with a lot of the biggest teams and competitors that we have saw last year. Our typical competitors, uh, guys that you saw last year, we will not have a defending champion. I believe Mon Cherie not in the field this year. That means we will be, have a, a new champion crown for 2023, but the, the fishing is going to be just the same. Everybody's going to be chasing that team. Last year's champion, Team Quantify. They were in dominating fashion, and it wasn't their best event here. But again, looking back at last year, it was a great start to the SFC. Now in the Gulf, Ronnie, um, we see a lot of blue marlin. That was the case at the Louisiana Gulf Coast Billfish Classic. Yeah, blue marlin were a big ticket item. Those are obviously the highest point total. You want to be a team that stacks a lot of blue marlin in your catches for the week. You also maybe want to get off to a hot start and get the first one, get those extra points. But we saw that was kind of a kiss of death. The first blue marlin did not result in a win. Moncherie got better every single day and ended up with the most blue marlin, and they took the title there. And like you said, Quantify wasn't their best event. No. But they got better every single tournament, it seemed, every single event they gained and kind of leaned into what their strategy was. So it'll be interesting. Six blue marlin for Moncherry last year. Matt Klosterman, our guy on site, said the fishing is good, and we should see numbers like that as well. I was hoping to see Damon Schwest here. I know uh, he's got other responsibilities, but hopefully he can pick up on other uh, some of our other Gulf events because to win the Gulf or the Atlantic, you have to fish at least three qualifying tournaments, and whoever does win the Gulf this year wins an extra $100,000. Yeah, and seeing how I guess the focus on that million dollars at the end of the year and then the golf points race is obviously going to be a very competitive one as we look at the blue marlin and the white marlin. 25 blues last year, one white to go to your point total. With it being so competitive, Robbie, those three minimum events, 
You're going to see a lot of these teams do all five of them to make sure that they get the best finishes possible. And I think this was the most points won by any particular team because six Blue Marlin, that would not be beat the rest of the year, although we did have several other species gaining a lot of uh, points as well, whether it be White Marlin, Sailfish. And we get some of those Atlantic stops, and you can see some spearfish or swordfish. But uh, earlier today, two different locations, Ronnie, taking off from Finnis as well as Grand Isle. Um, as a crow flies not too far from each other, but as far as the playing field, it is much further than, than typical event. Yeah, your launch site, which place you decide to put in and hang out for the week and then start your tournament, that kind of depends on where you're going to be heading. 200 miles, you know, for that first ring right there. And some of these rigs, they're going to be crowded. There might be some people around there, but with 32 boats in the tournament this week, we're going to see these guys maybe spread out a little bit. There should be good enough fishing at a couple of these rigs where we should see a couple, a couple different looks. Quality Team Southern Charm, one of the ones to look for. 63 Hatteras, Lana Bell, Ron Davis on there. Uh, Jay Hodge going to be getting us our, our camera shots throughout the week. We'd like to thank these guys on these boats for allowing our camera crew to get on board and show everybody just how much fun they're having. Yeah, 100%. To get the buy-in from these teams in year one was huge. We didn't know exactly what to expect from them as they just got their morning prayer for their boat before they launch and head out. The team buy-in is huge, Robbie, because now we have a lot of guys and a lot of teams right. year two expecting to only grow the sport. We kind of got in, showed people what the sport was all about on national TV, and now we get to grow it and expand it. A lot more eyeballs are on these teams now. They know the players. Yeah, with Southern Charm last year finishing third, they had four blue Marlin. Could four win it for you this year? It's a possibility. I don't. Six, that's a hard number to come by. If you catch four blue marlin in a tournament, you've done something special. Yeah, I think the team that can get off to a good start day one, if you get out to your spot after takeoff, a few hours go by, if you can get one blue marlin on your, on your tally today, and then start to catch some every single day, you know, right. they're gonna be staying out there. They don't have to worry about the run time for tomorrow's day of action. Yeah, right. So getting that little bit of fishing time in today will be crucial. If they can strike fast, they can maybe set the tone that, hey, five, six, that's the expectation. But I could see quantified kind of surprises all year with mixing in sailfish, white marlin. I could see some of those species coming into play, but blues will definitely be the focus this week. Hurricane hole again, looking better than ever. Ravaged by a hurricane a few years back, but uh, playing ravage to the rest of the field was quantified. We talked about how they won in dominant fashion. Uh, 5,000 points almost more than Montcherie, Rising Suns, and the rest below. Their worst finish of their best three was second. Yeah. I mean, that tells you how strong it was. It's hard to beat a 1-1-2. A one, one, and this year, the points are a little bit different, too, because those catch points really aren't going to make a difference unless we have a tie for those event wins. Um, uh, throughout the season. But quantified, let's look back on their championship and how I got started. And, and Louisiana Gulf Coast Billfish Classic, a seventh was not how they wanted to get it started, but they picked it up at the GCM. Yeah, the Gulf Coast Masters was kind of the turning point in the year. We started to hear a little bit more about them. They had a late run in that tournament to have success there. And we started to learn more about this team. Matt Klosterman was very familiar with them. But when we got to this event, we started to see this team knows how to target the whites and the sailfish better than others. Their right. strategy was a little bit different, and we saw that payoff not only at, uh, in Orange Beach for this event, but also in future events like this one. ECBC able to take the victory there as well. They did have a struggle event in between. Their worst of the season, I think 14th at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Billfish Classic. but. You get two wins, and you know you're really looking at your three Man. best finishes. They knew that they were the team to beat. When you have two wins and you haven't fished your home playing ground right. yet, that was they the last one. Ending the year at the TIFF tournament, you knew that Quantified was going to be in it to win it. What a great diverse. We thought Sailfish might be their deal. They ended up catching a bunch of white marlin in this tournament, too. And like we said, to have two wins going into the final event of the season, you have to replace your seventh place finish, I think, with 14th. another good one. 14th was their worst. Well, that? Well, yeah, oh, yeah, you're leading right. Leading into that, their, their top three, they had a seventh. Knowing they could replace it in their home tournament, they did. they did so with second place. And it would not be their only second place. I think they would still also get another second <laughs> at the final stop that they didn't even need. But they, it, you know what? You don't take that chance with a million dollars on the line. And uh, looking at the field or the crew that's on that boat, I think only his son is going to be the returner this year. That is the only last year's uh, team member that's going to be on board this year. I think it's one of those things, though, Robbie, where you have a guy like Tom Brady, and it doesn't matter who you put around him sometimes. Justin Drummond, the captain of Quantified, he is the one who runs that ship, and he runs it his way because he knows exactly the recipe to success. And he showed that last year. What a dominant season. 
you know, getting over 50% more than what the other, the second place team got points his, bo his boy Kyler, he said he better not leave me. That's the one that he <laughs> better not go or I'm not going to boot him. But who knows, things are crazy and especially you start and fighting among family members. Speaking of the uh, the family of the the Berthelot family, going to be one of the teams to look for this year. Uh, they actually competed in the first event in the, in the Sport Fishing Championship in the Dominican Republic. Uh, they finished just outside of the points in 21st, but uh, it wasn't for the lack of opportunity. They missed quite a few fish last week. And they got an opportunity to kind of experience that event. We know obviously these teams jumped in in the Gulf. They started to build momentum, build confidence as we see Team Rebecca leaving out. We were in the boat right here with Rising Suns. These teams built kind of confidence throughout the year. We know we got to learn a whole lot about Jason and Berth a lot, that whole crew. And so, that, hey, why not kick it off? Let's at least get our yeah. feet wet in the DR. They did so. They made the trip back over here. Got in yesterday, I do believe, ready to go for the Louisiana Gulf Coast Bill Fish. Their class. boat's being worked on, so they're actually using another family member's boat. Um, but either way, same crew. They do have a new crew member that came for the Bandito, so it will be a little bit different for this season. But either way, it's SFC Live, and we're kicking it off for you here from our studio. SFC coverage of the Louisiana Gulf Coast Billfish Classic is sponsored by Frito-Lay, Michelob Ultra, Denison Yachts, and by Salt Life. When it comes to performance, comfort, and functionality, we've got you covered. Performance apparel designed by anglers to make your time on the water better than ever. Salt Life, the official apparel sponsor of the Sport Fishing Championship. Whether you like to ride the wind, find your secret cove, or reel them in. Plot your paradise with GPS Map Series from Garmin. Settle in and reconnect with one another. South Padre Island has so many great places to stay. Condos, resorts, and hotels. Oh my! Book your spring getaway today. And start making memories poolside with the people you care about most. Visit SoPadre.com. When you're serious, you are as excited to wake up for a 4 a.m. fishing trip as you were when you were a kid. It means winning three World Sailfish Championships. It means you know what you need and what you don't. Being serious means seeking out the ultimate fishing machine, which is what Peter Miller has found in the unmatched handling, speed, and comfort of an invincible. Pine tar, bay rum, all natural, all natural. It's time for your old soap to take a hike with Dr. Squatch. The best natural men's soap, deodorant, shampoo, and so much more. Dr. Squatch is for players like Justin Herbert, who are here to shake things up. Who break records and hearts. Who are tough on the outside and soft on the skin side. Who only use natural performance enhancement and want their end zone to be fresh. <sighs> Go to DrSquatch.com today. Feel like a man, smell like a champion. Are you ready for the ultimate luxury fishing experience? Join the Sport Fishing Championship talent on the SFC Experience, where you'll explore incredible fisheries and enjoy world-class hospitality from diverse cultures and SFC partner locations. With the SFC Experience, you'll create unforgettable memories with friends, families, or colleagues. Book your trip today and embark on the adventure of a lifetime with the SFC Experience. SFC coverage of the Louisiana Gulf Coast Billfish Classic is sponsored by BioLite. 
Ice Shaker. Dura Bright. And by Denison Yachts. Well, there's the bridge, Ronnie. I don't know the official name of that bridge, but this morning they could not make that run through there until 10 a.m. They have to be back on, what is it, on Saturday 5. They, they have to have their lines out of the water, but they still have to actually check in at 7, even though they stopped fishing hours earlier. Yeah, we have, we have a lines out time and then a check-in time, and that's where we can make all those catches official because there is a lot on the line, Robbie. This is kind of stage two of the whole journey towards the million dollar winning prize. Just keep adding up those points to be a qualified uh, event for you. You gotta fish at least three of them to be eligible, but we've got five golf for Atlantic. Um, and, and you know, the Dominican Republic is what it is. The, if you finish in that top 20, you will get championship points, but you still have to fish two other championship events to be considered a, a championship possibility. But we know either way, at the end of the year, that same great trophy is gonna be handed out. Will it be quantified? Will it be one of our Atlantic or golf teams? And $1 million goes with that trophy. Team Rising Suns went to the DR, and even though they didn't get placement points for that event, like you said, if it comes down to a tiebreaker, those few, uh, you know, catches that they had in the DR yeah. will maybe loom large for their point total. Yeah, we'll talk about some of the tiebreakers and things like that because, again, the, the more blue marlin you catch, it 100%. you want the big fish. That's the first tiebreaker. You catch more blue marlin than everybody else does and you're tied, you break that tie for the win. Again, they're 200, maybe even 250, 300 miles out there. Put the uh, extra fuel bladders on board. We'll be talking about some of those canyons. Uh, one guy, and I didn't know he was a friend of mine, Justin Hobbs, I met when I was in Miami a few weeks ago at the catch, is Clayton Anderson. He's a great singer, songwriter, and he has the anthem to the Sport Fishing Championship. How does it go, Ronnie? Show me your fish. He had his prediction. Show me your fish. Uh -huh. Boy, did they ever in the SFC tournament down in the DR this past weekend, the fish were really biting. I called it. I said the total billfish count was going to be over 109. And it was, 117 were caught, and that's a new SFC record. That's incredible! If you predicted the over correctly in the comments from our post from last week, then the SFC is gonna be in touch about a special prize from their partner, Salt Life. I hope y'all enjoyed my opening song from Saturday's championship broadcast, Show Me Your Fish. <laughs> and I can't wait for the next one. Show me your <laughs> That's awesome. Indiana boy having a good time at the SFC. Uh, getting to meet him at the catch was awesome. And again, he's going to be uh, our anthem each and every Saturday, SFC Saturday, SFC Live. You're going to be following us on CBS Sports Network. Um, LASIK, one of our teams, clear vision for them. Yeah, exactly. I, I was talking to Katie, and I'm like, uh, surely it has something to do with optometrist or something. But this is some of the best underwater footage or looking down in the water, what they deal with, that I've seen even last year. Some of the visuals we get in the DR, I mean, when you see them that close, that's the payoff. You you know that you've got them excited, interested, and that's that's at, the first key to getting a catchable fish. Look at look at the bait to the left. The teaser was to the right. You, you, you almost took the attention away from that fish. We weren't positive this is one that they caught or they didn't catch, but you can see the bait just to the left of the screen running right through the water. The teasers, there's one that they're pulling out there. And it, when they started pulling out that teaser, the fish almost went to look at it instead of the bait yeah and that could have cost them getting your attention on the right thing at the right time is important as we go over to team liquid from the dr cnsd was the, the kickoff to the season a lot of these teams we'd seen the year before um but again they get to go back and forth each day and talk about it and have a good time some of these teams are coming back watching what they did on the water they're like hey that's me it was awesome for them yeah having that coming in and going out every single day that's a different experience a different culture as well and it kind of like you said they get to evaluate how they did if they did and make it better for the next day look at that black spot that is beauty right there <laughs> if you're in the ssc that is a billfish liquid with Catch five white marlin, uh, a blue marlin. There were sailfish caught in this tournament as well. I think there were nine of those, almost double digits. We talked about the dominance of uh, quantified. Well, Team Picara caught the bonus fish. They caught the first blue marlin in the tournament, gave them an extra 100 points. And again, it might have been the white marlin tournament. As you can see, there were sailfish caught. They caught two of those, uh, eight white marlin, but that blue marlin really set the tone. That's a huge point total for them, 350 points for the blue marlin. And then you get that bonus, obviously, on top of it. That was the difference 
in between first and second place over the team San Elias. My stats were different. I had them catch an eight. I'm going to give them eight. I'm going to give them eight. I don't know if it was seven or eight, but I, I'm going to give them eight. It was enough to take the title and by <laughs> just enough of a margin that there's no discrepancy. Yeah, absolutely. They won by 250 points and a, <laughs> a white marlin only worth 125. So everybody, we're looking for those blue marlin worth 350 and let you catch the first one like uh, Picara did. That's an extra 100 bonus points. Katie Sawyer's telling me it was a white marlin tournament. She said, ah, no, they're not looking for blues. And dude, we're going to bring her on in just a second. Needless to say, that blues, what made the difference? You win by 250, you needed that 350 slash 450 fish. Yeah, you have to catch a, a kind of an extra two or three white marlin if you're going to leave the blues on the table. But if you catch one of those and get the points for that, that's a huge mark going towards it. And you can see that each day. Day one, obviously, one blue marlin. It went up three blue marlin on day two and then two on the final day. Those white marlin counts, those are pretty steady. And overall, what a great billfish count, like Clayton Anderson was saying, more than 2022. There's your final standings, and those are the championship points you get with them. Now, you don't see the catch points added up. That doesn't make a difference. We don't want to confuse anybody, but you know, if you get a win, you get 3,500 bonus points or, or points in general leading you to that championship. Welcome on site. Uh, they're actually at Hurricane Hall. I had to bust you before you came on uh, camera. Katie Sawyer, you said it wasn't a white marlin tournament or a blue marlin tournament. It was a white marlin tournament. If a car didn't get that blue, they wouldn't have won. Hey guys, great to be here in Louisiana. Uh, you're totally right, Robbie. There were some hungry blue marlin in the shallow waters of the Dominican Republic last week, and evidence really suggests that that was the win that brought on Picara what the fish they needed. Now here we're in Louisiana. Everything's looking really good. I'm really excited to be at the first event for the 2023 Gulf Circuit, and I couldn't be more stoked to see what these teams bring out. You got to see what it was like at the catch with the NFL players, and we back it up, Dominican, back and forth each night. What was it like for these guys? What was the atmosphere like? I know they had a crawfish boil and everything uh, else yesterday as well. Everything's been nothing but festivities here in Grand Isle specifically, and I got a chance to talk to a lot of the teams yesterday about a little bit about what their plans are for this big tournament event. A couple key words kept showing up, things like current, sea temps, rip. So what is a rip? A rip is where two converging currents meet offshore and a lot of times they can be visualized from the surface by wind. There might be a slick or a big grass line. You hear a lot of talk in the Gulf of Mexico about sargasm. A lot of times if the conditions are right, the sargasm will build up along the rip and the boats know that that's where the fish could congregate. Added bonus, if there is a temperature change, the guys are looking for a temperature break. If one of the currents has warmer water than the other, it'll often corral the species into feeding right there. So rips are really what these guys are looking for. I think they're basing a lot of their plan off of what the conditions and what the charts have been saying. Katie, you obviously know your stuff, so don't worry about Robbie Floyd ragging on you. You're going to have plenty <laughs> of chances to be right and him be wrong this season. But, Katie, one other X factor other than the currents and the altimetry and all of the rips, things like that that you just discussed, is the actual weather outside. This is beautiful weather right there, Hurricane Hole, right off the coast of Louisiana. These teams are going to have an easy path to their fishing spots, and then they're going to build. It's going to be manageable all three days, correct? Well, it's looking really good. As of now, every all the conditions are looking premium for this fishing trip, this weekend trip. Now, when you're fishing this far off of the coast in the Gulf of Mexico, these teams really need to be ready for anything. Anything could happen. They've got all their tackle. They have a smooth ride out now, and you can see that these guys are really capitalizing on that smooth ride. They're getting all of their bait ready. They're getting their dredge baits ready. They are really just taking the time necessary to make sure that when it's time to go fishing, they are ready to go. Katie, uh, I'm ready to have some fun this season. Again, SFC Live is something we're going to try and give them the behind the scenes stuff. We're watching the boats as they took off uh, this morning live. And with the satellite technology, it's going to be a possibility. You made my day, Katie, because you started going stat geek, and usually that's Ronnie, you know, Ronnie's <laughs> realm, but now you're going to be Scoops McGee. You're going to have to get that insight that we can't get here, um, but I know Ronnie's loving the stuff you were laying down right then as far as the stats and the rip currents and all these converging lines. 
Well, Robbie, it's a super vital part of the sport fishing game. These billfish are highly migratory species. The tuna are migratory species, the mahi, the wahoo, all of them. So they're always moving. That means they're always going. And these captains and crews need to be able to analyze where to bring the the game you know like the, the gulf of mexico is 900 miles wide so they've got a big playing field with the obvious restrictions of fuel burn and how much time they have for for the tournament itself they can go just about anywhere so it's it's re going to be really interesting to see what what's coming on but i appreciate that thank you Ronnie, one thing that I, and she mentioned it a little bit earlier and then talking to Matt Klosterman is one of the things we're going to be looking for is not just the blue marlin, the white marlin, the sailfish, but also we don't have a tone set for our championship fish yet as well. And I think that can be another thing to look for. The yellowfin tuna could definitely come out of here. Um, we definitely a mahi mahi, possibly a wahoo. There's a lot of money on the line for our championship fish as well. If there's one thing we know about the Gulf of Mexico is the fishing can be scarce, but the fish can be what you call, Robbie, bigs. You never know what, what these boats are going to catch, what they're going to bring back to the docks in terms of championship fish. And uh, it, it'll be really interesting to see if Grand Isle is the, is the destination that brings a big fish back this year. Got to set that tone. Thank you, Katie. We're going to see you at the top of the hour on CBS Sports Network. We're kicking it off live, SFC Live. The boats ran out. This morning, including rising sons, will they have a rising daughter? Uh, Jacelyn birthed a lot. Her studies at LSU, she couldn't go to the DR, even though she was saying, hey, I could have I could have came and fished Friday and Saturday. She was texting Toby, he's like, well, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> she, he'd have much rather had her out there trying to catch yeah. fish instead of Jimmy Crochet. Come on, Cricket. Yeah, you fly in the X factor when you get the chance. <laughs> Try to make that and at least get two of the three days under the belt there. but. We did. We discovered a lot of different characters, uh, athletes, competitors last year. We know some skill sets and we know how these teams operate. Like you said, Captain Cricket, he's got his crew ship shape, but if you're missing a piece of that, it's a different dynamic for your team. Right, let's take a look back at last year's Southern Charm, one of our top teams. They would finish fourth in the championship for the Gulf Division. They headed out this morning. Uh, Trying to do a little bit better this year, but it was a solid start for them last year. I mean, thirds, pretty good start to the year. And to go back to back thirds, I thought they were the team to beat. Yeah, after the first event, they maybe weren't at the top spot of the F SFC. But then as it went on, they started to gain that steam. And at a certain point, they took the reins and they had to hand those off to Quantified, who took it the rest of the way. But Southern Charm, for a minute there, they were the team that we had our eyes on going into every single event third place finish in this event last year got it off on the right foot. Yeah, again with four blue Marlin kicking off. Uh, they'll get 1400 points if they can do that this year. You always hear consistency wins championship. You, if they would have went third, third one, unfortunately, they still wouldn't have uh, yeah. had the three best finishes. That's just how solid the quantified was. But you keep getting those top threes, top fives, you're giving yourself a chance. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, obviously the prize pool and the monies for all of these tournaments help fund everything and keep the team out there competing in all these big tournaments. But yeah, like you said, points wise for our standings, for our million dollar payday, thirds and thirds, those aren't too shabby. No. You'll take those and go from there. Well, the ECBC was their other best finish. I believe the finish fourth in or 11th in that one and that that's the drop you didn't want to have. You, you needed a single digit or better. But again, they're going to have another opportunity this year. They're in all the big tournaments of the golf, and we partner with the best tournaments uh, around the country, around the world for that matter, now that we've already hit our international destination of the Dominican Republic. Yeah, and when you said they finished 11th, that doesn't sound bad, especially for how big and how many teams were in the ECBC event last year. But this was, remember, this is where Quantified won. So you start out the year with a couple thirds, and then you get 11th, but that's right when your nearest competitor gets a first. They also racked up a ton of catch points there, and that's where the tide turned for Team Southern Charm going forward. They obviously got some extra bonus points throughout uh, catch points wise. A great season to start off the SFC for them last year. Yeah, and then this year you get points for the place that you finish. We can have ties uh, for second and beyond. We will not have a tie for a winner in the SFC. Um, that that's determined by first Blue Marlin catch uh, of the tournament, I believe, or in, in that series. So maybe the winner um, didn't catch a Blue Marlin. Well, that's, That's a, yeah, yeah. And you, you tied, you, you're not the winner anymore. <laughs> it goes to the other team. Trying to make it a little more uh, simple for you, but earlier today they took off from two different locations in Venice, Louisiana and Grand Isle. 
Uh, by boat, not too far. If you're driving, it's a little wrap around <laughs> the peninsula there. And we mentioned it. You talked about it with Katie there, the championship fish, the yellowfin tuna, the mahi-mahi, uh, the wahoo. Those are going to be all important as well when it comes to getting the possible $50,000 extra bonuses there. But then also, this is like billfish capital of the world. We'll have some of these tournaments in Biloxi and uh, Orange Beach that they'll head out to the same playing grounds that they're at right now. For sure. So this kind of is the set, setting the tone. We get a, a lay of the land. We get to see the fishing reports as it happens live. And that'll set the tone for the next couple weeks as we have these follow-up events. So we'll see maybe a team jump out to a good momentum in this one and they get to carry it for the next few weeks. What about you and as far as these starts go, you see the boats going out single file and a, a larger fleet this year, I think 32 boats in our field last year was only 19. Do you like the mass start of seeing 70 or 80 or 90 boats take off at once or do you like them a more calm reserve saying, hey, you can't pass the bridge by a certain time and spread well, out a little bit? Well, you know, it, it gets a little wild after the bridge. If they all have a starting yeah. line and they take off there, it's going to be a race to your, your proven grounds to the rigs that you want to be at, but to see the different visuals at all of these different events, when you do have the big shotgun start and everyone takes off at one time, as a competitor, as a, as a fisherman like I am as well, whether it's freshwater or saltwater, when you start a tournament and everyone takes off and you're looking boat to boat at the people you're trying to beat, yeah. it gets the blood flowing and it kind of sets the tone that first run. And so with the weather being as calm as it is right now in the Gulf, no crazy storms on the radar, things can pop up. But starting the tone with good weather, they can head out as fast as they want to from the start. No worry about letting up. It kind of sets the season off on the right foot in the Gulf. And some of the uh, some of the boats are a little larger than others. Might be a smoother, fast ride out. But then again, some of those center consoles might be able to to stay on top and get there quicker. Here's our catch points uh, for each and every event. These are our five uh, billfish categories we're looking at. You want to catch the blues and that extra 100 bonus points is a, a big, big pop. Yeah, 350 points for the blue marlin. Like uh, Katie said on the flip side though, it was a white marlin tournament for the CNSD. All these other, the blue marlin will loom large, especially the first one caught in the tournaments. Last year, Breathe Easy sat on the top of this leaderboard for the Louisiana Gulf Coast Billfish Classic the whole time until the final day. So getting off to a good start this week will loom large. Well, they got to take off with full bellies last night. They had <laughs> quite the feast at Hurricane Hole. We're going to get to check it out. I'm telling you, I'm sitting back at the hotel watching what was going down in Louisiana. I can promise you I was very jealous. I'm jealous of these anglers because they're about to catch some billfish today. In Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua. We are proud, passionate, and full of life. On our island, adventure finds you. Strangers aren't strangers for long. The size of the audience doesn't change the beauty of the music. And we celebrate every last ray of sun. Live Boricua. the official sunglass partner of the Sport Fishing Championship. Well, we're waiting. I'm all right. Don't nobody worry about me. You got to give me a fight. Why don't you just let me be? Take a road trip and explore our state. Fill her up, then try a new restaurant that's as fun-loving as it is food-loving. Grab the family and take off for monumental adventures at our 21 state parks. Or take a magical minivan tour along our 19 scenic trails and byways. Louisiana's a trip. Take one today. This is Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. Plan your road trip at louisianastaycation.com. Whether you like to ride the wind, Find your secret cove. 
reel them in. Plot your paradise. With GPS Map Series from Garmin. When you're serious, you are as excited to wake up for a 4 a.m. fishing trip as you were when you were a kid. It means winning three World Sailfish Championships. It means you know what you need and what you don't. Being serious means seeking out the ultimate fishing machine, which is what Peter Miller has found in the unmatched handling, speed, and comfort of an Invincible. SFC coverage of the Louisiana Gulf Coast Billfish Classic is sponsored by Garmin. Invincible Boats. Visit South Padre Island. And by SFC Experience. Everybody's coming to Hurricane Hole for the Louisiana Billfish Classic right now. And we're super excited to be part of the Sports Fishing Championship. Our executive chef, Chad Ferris, cooks everything from scratch and we source out all of our seafood locally. Any fish we see coming out of the Gulf, we do something with it. Our tuna comes right out of the Gulf. It's the best seafood in the world. We do everything in house. We open no cans, no boxes, everything from salad dressing to seasoning and all fresh fish. Tuna yeah, tacos, yeah. that's my creation. Uh, fresh seared tuna. I'm gonna marinate it in our tuna marinade. Our jalapeno cilantro slaw. We fill our shells up, add our fresh tuna. We do a wasabi mashed potatoes. We got sesame seed, ginger, dressing, our homemade soy glaze, fresh avocado, red onion, tomato, cilantro microgreens, and a dash of wasabi cream. Tuna tacos, hurricane hole. I've never been more jealous of, uh, of a food piece in my lifetime. Ronnie Moore, I'm Robbie Floyd. Welcome back to the Sport Fishing Championship SFC Live. I'm, I'm sick to my stomach. I, I do have my Whataburger coffee, but I was like, dude, I have never been more hungry watching a piece than I was right then. You know, there's perks to being in the studio, but man, there are some perks to being on site. And so obviously if you're around Hurricane Hole this week for the Louisiana Gulf Coast Billfish Classic, you're getting tacos on demand. Gosh, I would love to be there right now. That's some fresh catch, too, because you know the tuna are just right out there. Another one of our championship fish we haven't talked about uh, that may actually be caught here, and we were thinking that they were more Atlantic fish or a big eye tuna. And talking to some of the teams, there are big eye tuna in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. You know what else is in the Gulf of Mexico? All our talent. Yes, that's right. Michelle Dalton, welcome everybody to our newest. Where, where'd you go? The passion's real. I thought you were dipping out on us already. It's SFC Live. We are live, and we're glad you can be a part of it. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, beautiful Louisiana. It doesn't get better than this in the Gulf. I can't believe that you teased us in that feature at Hurricane <laughs> Hole, eating the tuna tacos. We're jealous here in the studio. This is a great destination to, for the second stop of the SFC, where the teams that you got to talk to and visit with excited to kick off the Gulf Division this week in such a great place. Mm -hmm. It couldn't be better than this. I mean, oh, and those tuna tacos, by the way, were incredible. Oh, gosh, I mean, fresh yellowfin tuna. You can watch the executive chef in the kitchen cook up anything there, and I mean, it all comes out just amazing. It's only befitting uh, yellowfin tuna, and I know you uh, pilot a 36 yellowfin uh, boat <laughs> as well. Um, tell us about your history, because a lot of people don't necessarily follow social media. Tell us about you. What's Michelle been up to, and uh, are you planning on going to all of our events, some of our events? When will we be seeing you? I will be at all of the events, all of them but Orange Beach. Um, and yeah, I've been fishing my whole life. I started off freshwater fishing. Uh, I didn't get into the sport fishing until I was about high school. As soon as I learned that there was better table fare offshore, um, and then from there I started fishing tournaments and started getting sponsors and then eventually built a social media presence. So 
it's been just awesome just traveling the world to fish tournaments and run charters and I get to do this. I'm with you guys. Michelle, what is your favorite fish to catch? We obviously have got all kinds of billfish possibilities in the Gulf, all of our championship <laughs> division fish. What would you say would be your specialty if, hey, if, if I gave you three hours to go catch one, which, which one are you <laughs> going to target the most and feel, feel the best about? Hmm, this is a hard one, and I get asked this question so often. I would have to say a sailfish, the Atlantic sailfish, just because it's home, and it's our Florida state fish, um, and I've caught just way too many to count. Um, otherwise, I love a rooster fish. Not a lot of people could say they caught a rooster fish, but it's one of my favorite inshore fish to catch, and they definitely give you a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> Uh, it's really cool, Ronnie. We're getting uh, new talent on, on site there. Of course, with uh, Michelle, we've got Katie. Peter Miller still, he's probably in first class right now, uh, <laughs> yeah. still flying uh, to our studio. And we'll have him tomorrow. Uh, you've been around him, I'm sure, in, in Florida. Um, kite fishing, sail fishing. I mean, you, you, you know Peter, right? Oh, yeah, I know Peter. I've actually not had the chance to fish with Peter yet. Me either. Me, We're I've even. Seen him at all kinds of events. <laughs> yes. I, I bust him on that every chance I get. Michelle, now looking at the Louisiana <laughs> Gulf Coast Billfish Classic, obviously 32 teams headed out today. The biggest uh, tournament total for this event, uh, 13 more than last year. There's some of the best names and teams in the Gulf heading out. It should be a hotly contested event. A lot of teams positive that they're going to have good catches this week, especially on the Blue Marlin side. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Blue Marlin, that's where you get the points. So hopefully these teams can find the Blue Marlin. It's just all about being at the right place at the right time. <laughs> We're watching the teams uh, as they head out this morning and throughout the day. And the, the one thing that's enabling us to do this now, we've had cell phone technology, some satellite stuff, but the satellite and technology has gotten better. And we'll try and bring you stuff each and every day live as it's happening out on the water. And again, for both Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays of our events, we will be live on CBS Sports Network. Uh, we'll try and bring you some of the SFC live stuff, what's happening. The thing, Ronnie, like looking to the upper left, yep. you see the platforms, the rigs. That's a factor here. We did not see any of that. We would be dealing with fads, fish aggregating devices and Michelle I know you see those on the Atlantic we see it all over the world how much do you think that's going to play a factor here as they're running out because it's the rigs that are actual fads right Yes, they are. Those rigs are fads. So, I mean, these fads are, you know, super far away. I have actually not had the chance personally to use one of those fish aggregating devices. But, yeah, if, if they have them out there, I would assume that they have a better chance than the other teams who don't. <laughs> Michelle, another aspect of strategy for some of these teams heading out is before they even get to the territory where they're going to target all the billfish or the championship division fish, whatever their first strategy stop today is, they have to go catch live bait. How much time is that going to take out of their schedule? Uh, how much bait do you want to catch at your first stop? Are you trying to make that last all three days or is this just catching your bait for today and tonight will handle the rest of the week? I think a lot of these teams have uh, good enough bait for the three days, but I guess it just really depends on how much is used. Um, you want to keep the bait fresh. Uh, you want to brine the ballyhoo, make sure everything is like pristine condition. So um, I would imagine it takes about an hour or so to catch bait. Um, if they want to go out day two, day three and utilize some of that time in the morning, then it's kind of a risk or you just kind of go with what you have. So. Get ready. Hey, either way, it's three days of competition. They're heading out there still as we speak. Uh, we'll see you at the top of the hour. Thanks for joining us for 2023, part of the Sport Fishing Championship. Again, you're going to be seeing Michelle Dalton at almost every stop, and you'll be seeing Rebecca in the Gulf trying to take that title as well, Ronnie. We got to see Rebecca early in the season, make a name for themselves. We missed them in the mid part of the season in terms of the standings and their finishes, but then they ha I believe they had a great finish to end the year at yeah. the Tift event. Yeah, finished with a third there. I think last year they were in that four-way tie for seventh fog cutter quantified rising suns and rebecca so quantified one of the teams that did tie rebecca and, and you know knowing what i know now seventh wasn't a bad start i mean that was really good but i mean when you didn't even sniff hardly another seventh the rest of the year i mean that's when you know you were dialed but what do you do ronnie when you have a new crew things are going to be different how long has he been working with this crew has he been working with this crew well i think when you talk we're talking about team quantified correct right. yeah. yeah when you have a guy like justin drummond the captain of the boat the one who kind of everything goes off of his command and his call 
It's one of those where the you might see the coach a little more laid back last year when he has a familiar squad. Right. But when he's got a new squad this week, we're going to set the tone. We're going to be strict. We're going to be concise. We're going to have good communications. Here's our game plan, and until it doesn't work, we've got to see it through. We've got to give it a shot before we make those adjustments. But Justin Drummond, whether he was by himself or with a crew, he's going to at least have a good game plan. All those uh, mates on board, all the deckhands, all those people factor into if your team's successful or not. But under his watchful command, I think they're going to get off to at least the right start, right game plan. No doubt looking at all of our teams uh, as they took off this morning, including Rebecca, Captain Clinton Clark. One of the ones to look for, as well as uh, some of our championship contenders from last year making the run. And one of those will be Team Rising Suns, although they're on a different boat for this event. They hope to have their boat for the next, but it's got to make that run around the, uh, the tip of Florida to do that. It's been, I think, in West Palm getting new engines and electronics put in. But uh, another, another family member has donned their boat for the week, and they're going to go out there and try and win this event. I wonder how much kickback you get if you use one of your bros' boats or your family members' boats. Hey, you know, sometimes it might just be a solid, but, you know, this, you think, these, these you are think expensive rigs with a million lot of dollars things. on the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that is the purse this week. It's good to see that over half a million dollars. Uh, all those different side pots and prize pots. A lot of different strategies going involved because they're trying to whatever whatever works to get to the biggest payday possible. That's what these teams are going to do, because if you do have to give a kickback, Robbie, you want to make sure you get as much for yourself as you can as well. No matter what, Rising Sun's going to be in it to win it. Jason Berthlaw, one of our, our fan votes angler of the year. She's a student at Louisiana State University, but she's also a student out there on the water. She gets it done, whether it's in the sport fishing championship or at school at LSU. Jason, the one to look for. We were sitting waiting for a bite, just got hit. I was able to catch it and release it. It was an awesome fight. It jumped and it was beautiful. And yeah, so I'm just trying to change the meaning of fishing like a girl, one fish at a time. Jacelyn, uh, my daughter's been fishing with us on the Rising Suns for about uh, seven years now. She started out, you know, riding up front while I was driving and kind of watching people fish. And for about the last six years, she's been pretty much our main angler. Um, She's a really, really good in the chair. She's kind of like she's got a radar. She'll hear either boat move forward, clicker go off, and you turn around and you're like, where's Jason? Oh, she's already sitting in the chair. Pretty impressive to watch a, you know, a 90 pound girl, you know, battle a 400 plus pound fish and just sit there and go after it, um, you know, but she um, has the motto of, she wants to change the meaning of fishing like a girl, one fish at a time. So it's pretty proud to watch. And that's awesome. She, I mean, she's tough. She fights them out there and got to do it, you know, even at the last stop, got to pitch back and do it all herself because that, that was part of the rules. You had to do it yourself. She did it. And the boats ran out this morning. Where There's our mass exodus, except they do it from two different locations. Yeah, you got the, like you said, Hurricane Hole, Grand Isle is one destination, and then also Venice, Louisiana. And those are two points, like you said, as the crow flies, not too far from each other. But if you have a strategy, you're going to go maybe a little more to the east. You're going to maybe want to be out of Venice. If you want to stay to the playing grounds to the west, Grand Isle is going to be your closest launch point from there. It's great to be back in the Gulf Division. We saw some of the best teams of the SFC duke it out in these events. And to see at least half of the competitors this week are SFC teams, you know that they're taking this seriously now. It's not just the introduction year, it is the competition year number two for these guys. And we're bringing it to you out on the water from today. Uh, there's Toby Berth a lot and uh, catching some bait for later on. Now some of these teams might already have bait on board that they've had and they're growing them to the right size, but let's see what he has on here. I'm a blue runner guy, Ronnie. I, you give me a blue runner, I'm on. You don't want to handle them too much with your hands. You want to keep them. You want to make that transfer easily from, from hook to well so that they can keep keep it intact like they were before. And like you said, they've got some new guys on Team Rising Suns. Alex. Alex is one of the, uh, the hands that's made the switch from Bandito over to Rising Sun. Alex Diaz. And uh, you see the fish are catching. Those are not the size tuna that they're going to be trying to catch the big blue no, barlin, but no. those might catch the tuna. Who knows? Yes. We've got a lot uh, still lying ahead. Thanks for sticking with us here on the web. 
I get to change from my Salt Life t-shirt to the Salt Life pullover here. We're about now, to Ronnie. do the real thing. CBS Sports Network at the top of the hour. We're excited to bring you two hours of sport fishing championship coverage from the Gulf. Our first stop of the Gulf, Hurricane Hall, Grand Isle, Louisiana, and the Louisiana Gulf Coast Bill Fish Classic. You saw our feature teams out on the water. They've got satellites hooked up. We're ready to go again from behalf of uh, the rest of my team. I'm going to see you uh, in, at the top of the hour. It doesn't get any easier. All you do is just click on and watch. Thanks for being a part of the Sport Fishing Championship, our first SFC Live of the season, Ronnie. Let's do it. You ready, CBS Sports? I'm excited. Let's get it going. Let's do this. We'll be back with more Sport Fishing Championship from Louisiana.